All right, we knew uh, the president uh, would take matters into his own hands. You're looking at the White House, sir, where the president has outlined with the vice president, the attorney general, uh, plans to, via executive order, at least six such executive orders, to rein in dangerous guns or Americans' uh, easy ability to get easy access to them. Uh, he says he is uh, not against, you know, those who want to have guns or, or anything having to do with that, but, but those that are reconfigured so-called ghost guns to be anything what, than what they were originally intended to be. That's something he wants to rein in. Now, a number of uh, gun enthusiasts and hunters and those who feel the president's going too far worry that this could be a step toward a, a far bigger and, and, and more onerous restrictions. Uh, let's get the read right now from George P. Bush. He is the Texas Land Commissioner, kind enough to join us right now. Commissioner, good to see you. Um, I, I know you are entertaining a run for attorney general in, in, in the Lone Star State, but, but Texas is, as you know, better than most, is, uh, you know, quite a, you know, got enthusiast state, a hunting state, and, and probably is looking at some of this with, with some worry and some trepidation. How about you? Absolutely. You know, in our state, we have a proud tradition of responsible gun ownership. We have a bill looking at what other states have done in terms of passing a constitutional carry. I myself have a, am a CHL, a concealed handgun license owner myself here in Texas. And it's a tradition that we're going to keep alive and well here in Texas. Look, this issue needs to be dealt with in terms of the crisis that we're seeing among the human condition in our country. It's not necessarily gun owners that are creating this problem. It's folks that are facing mental health challenges. It's folks that are committing suicide. And, and perhaps we need to do a better job as in, at the community level to make the investment of resources to mitigate the violence that we're seeing that might be used with guns, but are actually caused by a, a troubling human condition. So, Commissioner, when the president says he wants to ban the, the type of weapons that go beyond those that might be useful for hunters, like these so-called ghost guns that are retrofitted to be quite different than what they were before they were retrofitted. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm comfortable with existing federal guidelines as they are, and I would believe that states can better manage gun policy than, say, the federal government, particularly through executive order. You know, if we can work together, perhaps in the Congress, to come forward with solutions. But in my opinion, let's let states like Texas design their own policy because we best know how to manage our economy, our way of life, and how we can manage um, the situation in, in our state. So, um, you know, I haven't had a chance to personally review the executive orders myself this morning as they become breaking news, but I will share that this is not going to be welcomed in our state. Um, you've also been critical of the, the, the stance the administration has taken on traditional fossil fuels and, and the industry. What is your biggest worry in the president's uh, green push right now? So even though the state of Texas has less than 2 percent of its state geography controlled by the feds, the Biden order on the hydraulic fracturing horizontal drilling ban on federal leases could jeopardize up to 120,000 jobs in our state of the 400,000 that are directly employed by the oil and gas industry. And, and that's the one where, you know, my agency is intervening in a case that's now pending in the state of Wyoming, where the Western Petroleum Association, you look at states like Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, rely upon these federal leases to generate revenues for their public schools. So that's the most problematic one right now. Others talk about Keystone, that's 11,000 jobs. Others talk about the Endangered Species Act, which also could jeopardize uh, production in our state, which generates about 44 percent of the nation's um, oil. But um, right now, the, the hydraulic ban and horizontal drilling ban on federal leases is the most problematic. You know, um, Commissioner, while I have you, uh, your uncle, uh, George W. Bush, the former president, has been quite complimentary of Joe Biden in his first couple of months, saying that he's off to a good start. Um, your dad, Jeb Bush, uh, has commended some of the tone that has come out of the Biden White House. Uh, by and large, your, your larger family has, has been very quiet on Donald Trump. Uh, you have not. You supported him ultimately when he was the nominee in 2016 and in his reelection in 2020. But you stand out in your family for that. Uh, so I, the obvious question is, what are family dinner conversations like? <laughs> They're sometimes awkward, sometimes awkward. Um, but they understand that I'm my own man with my own vision for my state here in Texas and, and my own ideas. And I, I couldn't 
reconcile uh, supporting the opponents, whether it be in 16 or 20, or the ideas that they're now presenting. A lot of constituents I visit with say that you know they didn't sign up for what we're seeing out of the White House, and he has basically become beholden to the extreme in his party, uh, even though he kind of campaigned as the unifier. So uh, I, might, I disagree with my, my dad and my uncle on that front, but um, I think we take the energy, honestly, right now, at least when I talk with the grassroots, of what President Trump created, uh, looking out for the blue-collar worker, being skeptical of, of our trade agreements, taking on China on the national security front, securing the border, particularly here in Texas. That's what they no, want to hear, I, I and that's see, what they— I, I can see all, all, all of that, and I, I get that part, George. I guess, um, you know, the, the policies and the positions he, uh, the, uh, Donald Trump took— uh, are very different than maybe the personality of the man. Uh, but he had a lot of awful things to say about your dad on um, low energy and on and on. And your father was famous for saying of the January 6th uh, Capitol Hill violence that the president provoked that disgusting event at the Capitol. W what do you think of that? Well, politics is sometimes tough. It's a, it's a full contact sport, as they say. And, you know, during rough primaries, whether it was my grandfather who ran for president several times or, or my uncle, um, they will tell you that they were the target, but they also um, delivered it. And so uh, that happens in presidential politics. I just know that in, in terms of what we do at the land office, we can capture some of that energy, some of those ideas, and use it for good in our state because uh, we need it more than ever. So, bottom line, you don't take any of this personally, or the, the, the remarks that uh, Donald Trump made against your dad personally, or the extended Bush family. You don't take any of that personally. I think you would have a very short career in politics if you take any of this personally. Uh, this is the true war is about ideas and and what's at stake for our country in the next century. Uh, I'm a father of a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. That's why I first entered public service. Was that um, I wanted them to be able to inherit a country, a state that's in a better condition than the one that currently I've had a chance to enjoy with my beautiful wife. And that's what I want to continue fighting for in, in the coming years. Um, you know, Commissioner, uh, your uncle, George W. Bush, had said of the where the Republican Party stands and what's populism, what's not, uh, I hope I'm quoting correctly here, uh, that history in the United States has shown that these populist movements begin to fritter over time. So I'm optimistic about democracy. I think what he's saying, I don't want to put words in your uncle's mouth, that the Trumpism, whatever you want to call it, represents but a blip on the historical timeline. What do you think of that? Well, it's really hard to say. I mean, that would require me to be able to predict the future, which I can't do. Uh, but what I can do is talk to you about 2022. And a lot of constituents are really tired already of the border surge that we're seeing because our communities on the border have been absorbing this surge for, for generations. Uh, they want a more proactive D.C. as it relates to that issue. Um, they want a D.C. that uh, steps back and allows states to create their own policies, such as uh, tradition that we have here in the state of Texas. Um, and the grassroots really is more fired up than ever. So even though things didn't work out at the top of the ticket um, in, during this last election cycle in 2020, I can tell you it was a really good night for conservatives here in the state of Texas. We maintained most of our majorities in the state house, the state senate, we have some work to do in our judicial races. All of our statewides are held by Republicans. Um, but part of the reason why I'm looking at, a, at another office is that we got to put the best team on the field here in Texas, and the Democrats are going to come at us with everything that they possibly can, whether it's uh, good candidates or, or additional financial resources. Um, you know, I don't know the, the, the family dynamics, George, so who am I to, to judge? I, I, I do know you stand out in your family for a variety of reasons. I mean, you, you're uh, a very popular commissioner. That's a very important post in your state. I know you're entertaining that run for attorney general. Others have said you've set your sights down the road on, on maybe becoming a governor or maybe becoming president of the United States. Uh, what about that? Well, um, right now I'm focused on the legislative session, the here and the now. And there's going to be plenty of time after legislative session to make an announcement and, and talk with the grassroots of our party. I, I, you know what I've learned, Neil, but in my clearly, professional you're career? Clearly, you're clearly interested in running for attorney general. Yeah, that, that, that is a given, right? I'm, take, I'm taking a, a very serious look at it. I, I think that the charges okay. that have been levied against the, the incumbent are very serious and need to be taken seriously. So for president, 
down the road, and that, that the Bush family still has a viable offering down the road, whatever you could say about the policies and positions of your dad and, and your, 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 your uncle and your grandfather, I mean, this is a family well steeped in, uh, in, in Republican politics. In fact, the, the, the disparaging note is establishment Republican politics. Uh, are you the establishment or are they? I'm actually a constitutional conservative. I'm a unique bridge, actually, in this party that can bring together uh, the clans, if you will. I have a demonstrated track record of doing that here in the state with being the largest vote getter in 2014 and, and then in 2018 when I got elected number two behind the governor. Um, so, you know, what I love about Texas is that we really are uh, our country in a nutshell, very diverse, rural, urban, suburban interests with a wide, uh, diverse population. And I've got a message that, that sells and resonates among conservatives and also among new Texans. We, we have almost 200 people moving here to the capital city every single day on a net basis, half of whom are from California. Um, the, the rush is on to Texas, and you need kind of a broad message that appeals to folks that, have, that are sixth generation, that have relatives in the Battle of the Alamo, but also a message that appeals to people that have just moved here from L.A. Yeah, you're right. Well, it's definitely going on. You're quite right about that. Uh, Commissioner, thank you very much. Good catching up uh, with you. Let us know if there are food fights in your house, um, but I, it doesn't sound like that's really happening. <laughs>